Hi there, this is Robbie at tech-tut.com, and this is my 741 headphone guitar amp build. And I just wanted to show my uh, viewers and those who may potentially buy one of these off of Etsy or eBay, wherever I decide to sell them, that uh, this is what it takes for me to build one. Uh, at this point, it still takes me 50 to 60 minutes to make a complete unit. So it, it takes a whole day and a half to make 10, 10 or 12 of these. It takes me quite a while, even with the, uh, the CNC making the circuit boards, which it used to be worse than that when I had to make these on perf board. My first revision back in 2010 was built on perf board and was point to point soldering and it could take 20 or 30 minutes to make the uh, make the circuit because I just wanted to make sure it was right I don't really get in a hurry when it comes to stuff like this and doing soldering because it's a pain to fix it later but I came up with this idea and I'm not sure how many other ideas are out there that use a 741 op amp for uh, any musical instrument it's not really meant for music but it seems to work it has the bandwidth and uh, the 386, I've used it a lot in the cigar box amps, so I wanted something that was a little bit different. Um, this is a low current draw device. I've tested it on uh, this revision here at 6 milliamps at 1 kilohertz, and uh, I couldn't tell you the load. For, they were uh, just regular headphone amps. I'm sure it's probably 100 ohms uh, load. But uh, it works pretty good, and uh, it's a low current draw device, so you don't have to worry about burning through 9 volt batteries. Um, these circuit boards with the micro CNC, this was a Lumen Lab, and uh, you see I gripe about it quite a bit because they uh, kind of went by the wayside there. But I can make a circuit board in 4 to 5 minutes if you include all the tool changes and actually routing them out. And that's the only step I do not show is the actual routing of the complete circuit board out. I uh, just didn't think about videotaping it because by that point I had already had 10 uh, circuit boards made. Uh, this is a scrap piece here that I made 10 on already. Um, Assembly is pretty straightforward. I'm working, still working on my engineering logbook on this. I haven't quite perfected the manufacturing process of them. About some stuff that I, you know, made. That I found that made this a lot easier. I had an older board. It's the same circuit, it's just older, sitting behind this one so I could see how to put it together. Hadn't quite memorized it yet. Looking from the top, I can look at it from the bottom and know. And then soldering all the pieces together is pretty straightforward. You just solder. Don't make any bridges, make sure everything's put together. Uh, I do final testing at the end to see if the circuit boards are, are complete and there's no solder bridges check for power and all that here's where uh, this is something new that I found out I used to use side cutters but I was taking down the Christmas stuff my wife wanted to put Christmas stuff up and found my Dremel tool that had been lost for about seven months I did use side cutters for this and uh, as I was about to push that down I noticed that there were some burrs in there I had to cut out and now that's the breakaway so that the box can close over the input jacks. This is the second thing I noticed. I used to try to measure like this. And I said, uh, you know, there's a better way. So I went and found some flat stock and uh, held that to the side to give me my starting point. This was something I, I just had to figure that out on my own. And I uh, forgot what my measurements are. I'm writing these in the log book as I uh, figure them out. These are making the measurements for the input drill holes and then the final measurement is made for the volume pot. And I had made a 1.45 inch measurement from the top down and forgot that's what it was and went back and drilled 13 cans at 1.145 inches and ruined 13 cans. There was no way I was gonna come back from that mistake. So I had 12 more sticking around. I used a stepper bit like this to drill out the final size holes. It leaves a pretty large burr. I pull out the loose pieces and keep the burr in there and use, the, uh, use that as grip on the input jacks. So if you were to take it apart 
there would be some uh, sharp edges folded in under underneath them. Of the jack, not the jack, the volume knob. And right here, I'm inserting the jacks. That's the next step once the box is made. You clean the dust out. And uh, I was trying to find all the jack pieces and, and the nut that goes on them. They had moved around the desk. That uh, drill press tends to shake quite a bit when it runs. It's a cheap $60 press that I got from Big Lots. You can see in the background of this, there's the... Uh, that box, the silver box, and that's a function test, function generator, and um, test board that I got while I was in school. And then this is the uh, steps to wire the whole board up. And I actually modded this after shooting the video. I don't do it like this anymore. Um, it takes too too long to uh, maneuver the wires in that box. So I put the wires. Now that I have them cut, I was also measuring and cutting these wires. As, uh, as this video was going on. You can see my measurements to the bottom right underneath the, the nippy snips and I was using those to make the right size wire so that I could streamline this process. And you can see that it's kind of aggravating to uh, do this and solder these inside of the box. So now I do the wires first and then install them into the box. It's much easier that way. But this gives you the, uh, the general idea what it takes to put one of these together. Circuit, schematic, and uh, parts list can be found at tech-tut.com. I sell these, but if you want to buy the parts and build them yourself, that's all right. This is an open source, and I encourage you, if you want to get involved in electronics, this is a fun project to build, and it's fairly simple. There's only a few parts. It will probably cost you more than I can build one because I buy parts hundreds at the time and keep them around. And then, of course, there's the assembly time, which I'm trying to knock that down with uh, the use of CNC routers and uh, engineering notes. And you can see at the right-hand side, you can see some more notes that I've made. Those were notes made in May of 2012. And then my final engineering notes here go to uh, November 16th of 2012 was my final revision and notes. And uh, if you don't keep a logbook, I suggest you do. The Maker's Notebook from Make Magazine is a nice book to have. And a lot of times they give these things away. I have two. I lose one at all times. But that's the headphone amp build. And if you uh, want one, you can find them on Etsy.com. My shop is Tech Tut. That's T-E-C-H-T-U-T. -T.